So by actually restricting the blood flow, you're replicating intensity that's almost impossible to get to. Oh, my hands are purple. Dude. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> Chef Rush recently made this short. There are a multitude of jokes there, mostly about this guy, but BFR training is not one of them. It is an evidence-based training protocol. And for some reason, it seems to be trending right now. Welcome to occlusion training with Ross Edgley. By restricting blood flow and oxygen, the muscles are forced to work harder in a shorter period of time, and a bunch of other sports science stuff happens. Basically, it's one of the most uncomfortable training methods I've experienced, but part of the puzzle in growing Thor's arms to look like the legs of a racehorse. Don't try this at home unless you have yourself a professional pain guru like Ross. And so BFR is a legit protocol, but again, he should probably discuss the other parts of the puzzle that he's used to grow his arms. But we have talked about that before, so let's stay on point and think about his superset protocol. And I label it supersets because it's two exercises back to back, but as you will see, Chris does sneak in some extra rest time. <laughs> I'm going to go five seconds. And so I've talked about occlusion training before. Of course, you do not need to use BFR for muscle growth, but it is an evidence-based strategy for creating an intensity that does challenge the muscle. And you can use a lighter weight and due to the blood flow restriction, this can create a severe challenge for the muscle. If you want more in-depth information about this training protocol, please watch this video. But Hemsworth recently released this post and I thought this would be productive to go through because it's a practical application of the concept and it's interesting to see how they structure BFR. But let's be honest, most of you will never use BFR and that's absolutely fine. And perhaps some of you may want to use this superset as an arm finisher or whatever at the end of your session, that is an option. And so questions we can think about, do you like the way they structured the session? Do you like the exercise selection, the exercise order, the rest periods? And if we were using those exercises and not using the BFR straps, how could we further increase the challenge, the overload? What methods could we use? And so the coach is Ross Edgley. I've heard of him, but I just don't know his stuff. In this instance, his in information is correct, if not exactly accurately communicated in some circumstances. But to be fair, he's in the middle of training Chris Hemsworth. He's got loads of cameras pointed at him. He's probably a bit distracted. Anyway, back to this video. And please, as always, give your inputs because that's greatly important. So not going to lie, this will not be pleasant. This is blood restriction training, occlusion training. And the basic principle is by restricting blood flow to the biceps, what happens is your slow twitch muscle fibers go, well, hang on, we've got no oxygen. So therefore we're gonna have to switch off. And so type one muscle fibers don't switch off. We can think of it, if you like, as them being overruled by type two muscle fibers because muscle fibers are recruited in order. And instead it completely targets the fast twitch muscle fibers the ones that we're going to need to get you up and down the road. But he's along the right lines here. And what we can think about with type 2 fibers, they are these powerful explosive muscle fibers, if you like, which are responsible for those power movements. And one way of, of recruiting them would be to use a heavy weight. Now, in this instance, they're using a lighter weight, but the BFR creates that higher intensity. And the reason that some people like to target type 2 muscle fibers for muscle growth is because they were born to hypertrophy. These types of muscle fibers were born to grow in size. And other ways that you can activate these motor units and, and target these type 2 muscle fibers could be, for example, using acceleration, using power through your concentric phase of a lift. There are many ways that you can increase the intensity of your workouts to activate these type 2 muscle fibers. It's going to train your bicep and your body's ability to tolerate lactic acid. And so to start, I would use the term lactate from pyruvate when discussing this issue, but lactic acid is okay. And so our body can produce energy aerobically with oxygen or anaerobically without oxygen. Aerobic energy lasts longer. That's what she said. Let's get that out of the way. And so lactic acid is produced during a process called anaerobic glycolysis, which involves the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate and lactate, which very simply is a way of producing energy, ATP. But you don't produce many ATP molecules with this method. And so the energy doesn't last a long time. But importantly, it is a usable energy source. And so lactic acid, per se is not something we should fear. Although of course there can be a level of people feeling uncomfortable with it. And so this whole workout with the BFR, the supersets, the short rest is very anaerobic in nature, a lack of oxygen consumption. Hands up who's weird enough to have made a video on lactate. Look at that microphone, how stupid is that? Moving on. We don't even have to go heavy. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. That ain't enough to go heavy. This is it. It's now not about weight. This isn't about mechanical tension. That's not what we're trying to train. We're trying to train your body's ability to tolerate lactic acid. That's what we're training right now. When he's talking about the concept of mechanical tension, he's talking about heavy weight, which requires a great force to overcome that resistance and the activation of, of muscle fibers. And of course, this term was made famous by Brad Schoenfeld and it involves disturbing the integrity of muscle fibers over a complete range of motion. But to his point that he's expressing is, with BFR, you don't have to use heavy weights. That's not what you're focusing on. You're using a lighter load. Now let's apply that on a wider scale. If some of you are looking at this and you're thinking, I'm not gonna use BFR and using hammer curls with a lighter weight, as another brain game, how could you increase the challenge of that? Perhaps you could think about using more time under tension. You could think about perhaps an isometric squeeze, a hold at the end of the concentric phase. There are certain different tweaks you can make when you're using a lighter weight to try and make your set harder. Okay, so he knocks out the hammer curls, which of course are a curl variation which engage the brachioradialis amongst other muscles. Standing, five seconds, isometric hold. And so there's a minimal rest where he stretches out by chalking his hands with a bit of spit. Lovely. Okay, five seconds. Right hand then it's five second isometric holds using body weight and a rope. Right hand over, five seconds left hand over, changing grip. Yes, there you go, there you go. Five, four, three, two, one, reverse it. Five, four, three, two, one, yep. And already using BFR in this way, he is feeling it. Ah, to my death. Oh. They're about to throw up. Did he just see the marketing for the center app? <laughs> Come on, I had to get one joke in there. And it doesn't matter if it just gets ugly. Yes, there you go, there you go. Yeah, turn it into a bar fight if you have to. It's getting mm. your body's ability to tolerate mm. lactic acid. Good, let's go. Good, 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 good. Two more, two more, two more, two more, two more, two more. Turn it into a bar fight if you have to. And Chris does turn it into a bar fight and throws the weights on the floor. Let's go. Ah! I should do. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buddy, you forgot the buddy. And so they repeat the superset, the hammer curls and the isometric rope holds, and Chris feels it. No, 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 it will feel like that. Oh, I feel a bit sick. It will feel like that. Oh, hang on. No, I know. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go! And they do multiple more supersets. I didn't count. To be honest, I couldn't be bothered. Oh, Jesus. Oh. The discount. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Natty Gaines. And so I thought that was just interesting to show you. Please give me your thoughts next. And so Hemsworth's trainer, the other guy, let's just say I'm not the biggest fan. He's just recently been interviewed for this article in September of the very year 2021. And it seems to be getting shared all over social media. Chris Hemsworth's Thor trainer says protein shakes and creatine are a waste of time if you want to build muscle and burn fat. And so protein shakes and creatine are two of the most legit supplements for people who choose to supplement. And so instantly, that title's slightly shocking. Chris Hemsworth is known for building muscle worthy of the God of Thunder in his role as Thor in the Marvel film series. If you're trying to bulk up like the actor, you need to take stacks of anabolic gummy bears. You don't have to spend money on supplements like protein shakes to get the gains you desire. According to Luke Zocchi, Hemsworth trainer, you don't have to spend money on supplements. That is correct. Supplements are supplemental. Eating good food and having a calorie surplus are more important. Unbelievably, I agree with this numbnut. The exception would be where people have a deficiency. And this can be caused by many issues. It could be some type of medical issue. It could be a specific diet, for example. But then supplements would become more important if you have a deficiency in a certain substance. But even then, I'd say that protein and creatine would not be those types of supplements. Soki told an insider in an interview coordinated by Center App, Hemsworth Wellness App, and here we go. It was going so well. He said the star made most of his gains through a combination of good nutrition and a rigorous workout routine. He did, and the juice. And so this is where this guy starts to become slightly nauseating. They give some good information, but then they also have to give that lack of transparency, the beginner trap. People think things like protein shakes and creatine make a big difference, but that's only 5% of the equations, like he said. Creatine, BCAAs, and similar products can give you an edge. You're half right, let's delete that bit. But only if you've nailed the basics of eating well and working out consistently. Absolutely agree. Consistency with training and nutrition, absolutely vital. There's also nothing magical about protein shakes, the main advantage of which is to provide concentrated nutrients to help round out your diet if you can't get enough from whole foods. Also convenience if you have a busy schedule. And so then they talk about Hemsworth's 4,500 calories and how for the average person, they're not gonna eat that. And again, 
again, focus on your food and your gym, solid information. And then he talks about being realistic about your expectations. And so reading this, I feel like this guy and maybe the center team have heard some of the criticism coming their way, especially about how they project and market Hemsworth's physique and the center app. Whether you're supplementing or not, Zohi said, no approach would magically make you look like Thor. As such, it's important to set goals that prioritize your progress rather than measuring yourself against a Hollywood star. Everyone's body is different. He said, I do the same workouts as Chris and eat the same and I don't look like him. And so they're moving in a better direction here. Still no mention of the juice because Hollywood and all that. And so that's the one major thing they're still missing. And to be clear, despite this improvement, centers still have plenty of trash marketing, which is very clearly misleading and there are many examples about that many videos about that and so they're not the beacon of honest fitness communication however it seems like they may have heard some of the criticism and they are responding and giving some slightly better information here and so they do deserve credit for that i'm james linker thank you for watching see you soon send you to a bar fight if you have to